Tyrell, as, a, as an undrafted guy, yeah. when you get to this part of the preseason, you know, last game, you know, final cuts are coming up. What, what is it like, you know, inside? How do you how do you feel? And then, you know, how what's the best way? If you're talking to these guys who are in that spot this week, how would you approach it? Yeah, I was in that spot at one time. I mean, I just, just you got to maximize your opportunity, you know. Um, of course, you're going to be nervous, but you, you can never be scared because, you know, um, throughout practice and stuff, it's going to show that you're ready. Um, I talked to a lot of undrafted guys, and I think every undrafted guy can play somewhere. Um, so I'm excited to see all those guys, you know, ball out. Is that like a little, almost a club? You know, like uh, guys who are undrafted, you know, you, you gotta, yeah. you're a special group, and you try yeah. to take care of each other a little bit? Yeah, we, yeah, we call it eighth round club. So um, me, me and Kim Lewis always argue, you know, I always say, I was eighth round first pick, and he's eighth round first pick, and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, it's kind—it's of, kind of like a brotherhood. When you have those conversations, is it you go up to guys and are like, "Hey, I want to talk you through this to tell you what it's like," or do they come to you? Um, it's kind of—it's kind of mutual, you know. Um, if I see a guy nervous or I see a guy m making a couple of mistakes here and there, I, I like to come up and g give them words of encouragement, or they get to come to me after practice and stuff like that, you know. And especially during special teams, you know, um, a, a lot of undrafted guys are going to make their way through special teams. So I feel like I'm one of the special teams captains now. And they just come to me, ask me questions, and I'm like open book to them. When did you feel comfortable starting to take on that role of being, you know, someone who would go help guys instead of maybe you had the questions early on? Yeah, I just started feel, feeling comfortable because, you know, Coach Smiley always says, like, you have to perform, you have to lead by example. So I feel like the last two years I've been leading by example, and now it's time for me to go um, lead with my words and stuff like that. So um, I love it. We talk about special teams a lot at this point because coaches are always referencing that's what's going to help a guy make the team. And yeah. then it seems like as it goes along, the only time they talk about special teams maybe is if there's a mistake. So how do you guys like, – tell us about the pride. Tell us about what it's like – internally the guys who are core special teams guys and the way they look at their role on this team i mean i think i think the role is like the perfect way guys have to know your role you know what i'm saying i always say you you can't you, you can't act like a starter you know what i'm saying if you're not a starter you have to you have to maximize your role you know what i'm saying and i think taiwan jones um is a perfect example of that uh year 13 or 12 something like that he's he's old but um um yeah, I think I think Taiwan is a perfect example, and, and you gotta take pride in that because like, that's how I made my money my first two or three years, you know. Um, but um, I think Sean does a good job of um, maximizing um, special teams, and because it's the first play of every game, so you gotta go out and set a tone. So if you don't do that, I mean, you're probably gonna get rolled over if you don't go out and set a tone. You're starting to be more comfortable on special teams, but how do you balance that? Focusing on special teams is like your main thing as a captain, but also wanting to play more on defense and, and to expand your role there. Where is that comfort level uh, for you being this, you know, being around here for a bit? Yeah, I'm very, I'm very comfortable with it. I mean, I watched AJ Klein. I mean, if you guys call AJ Klein up, he's like Tyrell would not shut up asking me questions, being in my ear because I kind of knew, you know, uh, w once he left, I, it was a possibility of mine uh, to to come step in that role, and I think I'm stepping in that role. Um, very good and stuff like that. So I got to continue just to maximize my opportunity when I get them. Playbook, what's the difference between playing Mike and Will? What's like the biggest difference there? Uh, you, the, the biggest difference in Mike and Will, you see uh, Matt Milano is more in coverage a lot. Uh, it's one-on-one -on -one with backs, it's one-on-one -on -one with tight ends and stuff like that. So uh, kind of working more in space um, as, you know, Matt Milano has been the best in, since 2017 at covering tight ends and line, I mean, and running backs, of course. You know, you go back to middle linebackers gone are the days of like the Ray Lewis types where it's really football's changed a lot, right? Yeah, but even uh, Mike, even Jermaine, I mean, you guys got to play in space more no matter which side you're on, right? Yeah, you, yeah, you have to play in space a lot. I mean, micro will. So I think that's why I'm, I'm great for both. Training camp and preseason within the team, it seems like there's been a lot of guys chirping. Do you already know what I'm going to ask? <laughs> Have you gotten louder in that too? What's that like? It seems fun, but also... I don't know. It's noticeable. Yeah. Um, whoever tweets Tyro Dotson got in a fight, my mom doesn't like it. <laughs> yeah, that, that girl got Google alerts on like a mug. Like, she was like, I told you, keep your hands to yourself. But, you know, I think, I think guys are ready to win. I think guys are ready to play someone else other than each other. I mean, I love it. Like, I'm sitting right here, my, my, like, 
I'm hyped up just thinking about it because guys are on edge and and I feel like I'm, re I'm really excited for our first game of the season. Is it more than past years or it seems like a lot of guys are taking it in like a if someone's yelling at me, it's going to make me play harder. So it's great. Is that a higher level than past years, or? Uh, I I feel it. I feel that um, a lot of guys we kind of got that taste at our main uh, at the goal that we want to get to, and I think guys are kind of like looking at the chops and and kind of motivating motivating each other in that way. So I mean, if your mom hollers at you, you're going to get it done. So that's kind of like what we're doing, hollering at each other, fighting and stuff like that. You play. Hearing from at this point, or is it? I mean, Isaiah is like the you know the one that comes up a lot. But is it there's specific guys you going up against? And you're like, man, I'm sick of hearing from. I'm him sick of hearing of Isaiah McKenzie and Bobby Hart. <laughs> chirp, chirp, chirp all day long. But yeah, yeah, I'm sick of them. The team plays a lot of five DBs, but it seems like they've been more willing to to put three linebackers out there. How do you view that opportunity when that gets called off? Uh, you just got to maximize. You got to make plays while you're out there because we're not out there a lot. You know, um, I think we, we were the number one team last year in, in nickel defense. So you just kind of you got to gotta maximize your opportunities while you're out there. If it's if it's fitting the run right, if it's uh, taking the ball away, I mean, you just got to you got to show up and show out when my number's called, you know. Well, you have the mic. Is there anything else we should be tweeting to your mom? <laughs> no, tell her stay off of it. Yeah.